All right, today's video is gonna be a review of the new Glossier Ultra Lips. If you wanna jump right into the review and demo, check the description box below for the timestamps because first I wanna talk about the kind of brand strategy of the launch and the marketing and my thoughts on that. But for those of you who like to talk about the beauty industry and kind of look at different marketing practices, let's talk about this launch. So they started by sort of, whether intentionally or not, teasing the product with Olivia Rodrigo's kind of like YouTube get ready with me video. Everyone was like, did she just use a new Glossier lip product? So that quickly got everyone buzzing about it. Glossier didn't really release any other information. And then launch day came and I know I and a lot of other people were expecting all of the Glossier reps to post their videos so we could see the reviews and then make the purchases ourselves. but that didn't happen. It was radio silence from the Glossier reps. And I have a bunch of friends that were Glossier reps, so I, I saw that they were posting, like we didn't get any heads up about this launch, we didn't get any PR. So that was instantly kind of bizarre that they didn't send PR to the Glossier reps, didn't do the normal, you know, widespread social media push. And then they launched all these videos on Instagram, just like color swatches of objects, models applying the product, and then like the video like spinning around upside down or like really uncomfortable close-ups on lips. And like the tongue would be like, it, it, it was super weird. <laughs> I don't know what the deal was with that. Maybe they were trying to just like push the boundaries, get creative, but it did not work for me at, like at all. To the point where watching the videos of the girls applying the lip products and the videos spinning around made me so dizzy and nauseous, I couldn't look at them anymore. And then they launched all these like lip swatches where they would show a model applying one color and then the next lip color would be just a picture of the color swatch. It was just like very unhelpful marketing. All of the videos and the photos on their Instagram were in this like really weird, dim, orange, red lighting. So they were going for this certain vibe, but it doesn't help consumers make a decision about what the color is. Like it was really hard to see what you were getting because it was just bizarre campaign videos. So then you would go to the website and the website had the opposite problem. The photos were super washed out so that everyone just looked like really dead and you couldn't see the colors very well. So I had a really hard time making my decisions on what shades to purchase because the Glossier reps didn't get the products and do like the big social media push and the campaign photos and videos looked really unhelpful. What I did like about the campaign launch was that they used a lot of models with different skin tones, more so than they usually do, which is great. Uh, but what was funny was that the palest models looked terrible. I mean, go to the website, go look at it right now. Like the palest models, every color makes them look dead. And I don't know if it was just whoever did the makeup for that video, the lighting, the styling, I don't know what it is, but every model to me on the paler end of the spectrum looked really, really bad. Overall, this was just a very bizarre brand strategy for me from Glossier, but we'll separate that from the actual product review. I just wanted to kind of throw that out there because I was just like scratching my head along with, I'm sure everybody else of like, what is this launch? Like, where are the Glossier reps? What, what's up with these weird ass spinning videos? Like, I'm nauseous. I just want to see what the colors look like. It's fucking weird, man. So. Let's talk about the products. Because the campaign was so unhelpful, I only ordered one shade, which was Villa. And then once I fell in love with the formula, I ordered two more, which is um, Lucite, which I'm wearing right now, and then Trench. Lucite is this very, very light, sheer, baby pink, and it is the lightest of all of the shades. And it is also the most sheer of all of the shades to the point where you can see it is almost clear and I'm going to build this up as much as possible, but you're basically seeing it fully built up on my lips right now. It just looks like a very, very glossy sheer wash of baby pink. This is the shade Villa. It also leans pretty pink in my opinion, um, but it's got a little bit of brown and definitely a little bit of sort of dusty, 
I don't want to say gray, but like there's like a dusty mauve kind of quality to it. It's not just a pink. It's it's definitely got a little bit of brown in there. And on the lips, it does look a little dusty on me too. So it's a little bit muted. It's not like a bright pinky brown. It's more on the pink side. You can see it's also much more pigmented than Lucite, but that shine comes through. And I think that this will probably be a crowd favorite for a lot of people. Then I ordered Trench, which was like the lightest nude in their range. And you can see it's definitely a kind of warm brown. I wasn't sure about this one. I think you can see in the bullet, I thought it looked like perfect for me, but you know what? Uh, it's a little bit too yellowy brown. So I think you can see pretty well in this lighting all three of the shades. If you're very cool toned like I am, that yellow is gonna pull through even more. But if you have yellow undertones, that's probably gonna look more neutral on you. Okay, I just took off Lucite so I could reapply it and talk more about the formula. As you saw, Lucite, baby pink. I'm just gonna do one sheer layer and then I'll do another one built up so you can really see based on the way that you like to apply lip products. So that's just a sheer layer of Lucite barely there, little bit of nourishment, touch of color, um, but that's not how I like to wear this one. I like to build this one up. As you can see, Lucite is very sheer and I did not want this color at first. Um, the first one I bought was Villa and then when I started seeing reviews, everyone with fair skin was raving about Lucite. And I think you can see why it just adds a touch of color. It makes my lips look really juicy, especially when I wear it with a little bit of a brown liner. It gives me the juiciest, like, did you just get filler lips? Um, so this shade I think is just fantastic. And this is what I wish all of them looked like in terms of the level of pigmentation. I think everyone said so far, this is the sheerest out of all of them. And then as you go darker, the pigmentation increases. So obviously on my fair skin, I would have wanted all of the ultra lips to have this level of sheerness, just that wash of color where I can kind of just like absentmindedly like do this at my desk and not worry about it. I don't, does anyone else do that? Like I sit there at my desk and I'm just like, that's how I wish all of these were, but that's not the case. However, that's not a bad thing because I think that this was probably their push for better inclusivity. They made all of the shades except for Lucite very, very pigmented so that you only do a swipe and you have the pigmentation that you need if you have medium to dark skin. So I can't trash them for doing that because that's a good thing that they made the line more inclusive and more pigmented. But it's interesting because I don't think it totally matches the Glossier vibe. like. Their thing is like easy to apply sheer products you can slap on and like not have to worry about it looking bad. I don't feel that way about any of the other colors because on my fair skin, they're just really pigmented. So again, obviously having more pigmented products is absolutely not a bad thing, but it's just an interesting observation considering like what their whole aesthetic is. Now let's do the shade Villa, which is slightly deeper, more pigmented, and it's still a pink with a little bit of brown and maybe a little bit of gray. One swipe. One swipe. So if you were to do one swipe of Villa, that's what it looks like. But let's build it up. So this is Villa at full opacity. I did like a bunch of swipes to get there. So definitely more pigmented than Lucite, but definitely not as pigmented as some of the darker shades. It's interesting. I think on the Glossier website, I remember this being described more as like a dusty mauve or something. Um, I can't remember, that might not be accurate, but this is, it's quite pink. So if you're looking for like, you know, like a nude lipstick, I would say this, you know, just be warned, this is quite pink, um, but I love pink, so works for me. <laughs> Lastly, we have the shade Trench, which is that warm brown. So that's one swipe of Trench, and now let's build it up. I 
I think as like a one swipe shade, it's a really nice color on me. But if you want to get that sort of glossiness and the really comforting nourishment of the product, you have to build it up a few times. It's not like instantly melty and glossy. You definitely have to swipe to build up the shine. So let's talk about the formula now that we did the lip swatches. Um, I think you saw when I was applying Trench, one of the issues that I have with it, which is with this bullet, um, it's perfect for my bottom lip. It fits the shape and size really well, but for my top lip, which is much smaller, if I just do this, like not looking at a mirror, it gets everywhere outside my lip lines. That's okay with the shade Lucite because it's so sheer. If you overline, it totally looks natural. It actually makes your lips look even better. But with Trench and Villa and the more pigmented shades, if I just swipe on my upper lip, it gets all outside my lip lines and gets really messy because they're so much more pigmented. So I would have much preferred a smaller bullet like the Gen G lips. However, maybe making the bullet a little bit bigger was also a step towards inclusivity for not just making, you know, small lip bullets for people with small lips. I don't know. Um, but personally, you know, the level of pigment in this one and the way that the bullet is a little bit larger is a little bit messy for me, but other people might love that. In terms of the formula itself, I love this formula. It feels so good on your lips. Um, it's the reason why I purchased two more shades after I tried Villa. It's unscented and sometimes with a lot of unscented products, you still can smell something in them. Like a lot of lip products that are unscented, you can still smell like a pungent, oil, then I hate that. These are actually zero scent. Like you cannot smell anything. It just feels really nourishing and it looks beautiful. The reason I love the formula so much is because they're on the thicker side. They're a little bit firmer. They have some grip. They're cushiony. They're nourishing. They are not at all like your standard, more lightweight, slippery, oily, thin, super, you know, spreadable, instantly glossy type of lip product. They feel more like a thicker lip mask. So if you really want that nourishing feeling, you have to build the product up more. And as you can see with Lucite, I was able to swipe it like all over my top lip and it didn't get pigment everywhere. It was just so sheer that I can apply it on the go without a mirror and have no problem. I can't do that with the other shades. So Lucite is definitely my favorite for that reason. I can build it up and really get like a thicker layer of that kind of lip balm, lip mask feeling that I love. And I can't really do that with Villa and Trench because they're more pigmented and they get really messy. So what I'll say about the fact that the other shades have more pigment is that it does end up looking a little bit more like a lipstick rather than a lip balm. So that's why I want to compare it to the M Cosmetics lip cushions, which are a very, very similar formula. I have three of the M Cosmetics lip cushions, and these feel exactly like the Laneige lip sleeping mask, but in a tube and with pigment. Very similar to the Glossier Ultra Lips as well, although the Glossier Ultra Lips are a little bit more of a stiffer formula, whereas the M Cosmetics lip cushions um, also have a smaller bullet, and are super melty and glossy right out of the gate. So that's why I wanna compare them because when you close your eyes and you rub your lips together, they feel extremely similar, but they look different. As you can see, you have a smaller slanted bullet. If you wanna know more information about the M Cosmetics lip cushions, I will link my video below where I did lip swatches and a full review of four of the shades. But for the purpose of this video, we're just gonna compare it to the Glossier Ultra Lips. Um, smaller bullet. And right out of the gate, you get that nourishing layer all over your lips. Whereas with the Glossier one, it's a stiffer formula, so you have to keep swiping it a few times to really get there. With the M Cosmetics Lip Cushion, you can do one swipe and you get like full pigment and full nourishment. So it really just depends on what your preference is. There's not one that's like good or bad. It just depends what you like. But I do have much more control with this because of the slanted tip and the smaller bullet. Venetian Rose was the most pigmented. So let's put on Magic Hour. So now you can see something a little bit more sheer. 
and I can just do this and it stays within my lip lines. That's the kind of lip product that I prefer, even though these are quite pigmented. So I would have loved if Glossier had a bullet that were more like this. The M Cosmetics lip cushion looks a little bit more glass-like on the lips. It fills in the lip lines a little bit more. I find the M Cosmetics lip cushions to just be a little bit more flattering. The Glossier one gets a little bit messy with the larger bullet. The Glossier one can look a little bit heavy on my lips. The M Cosmetics lip cushions don't do that. They look a little bit more like they kind of fill in the lips, like they kind of have that glass looking shine. And these are just like really small details, but I do find the M Cosmetics lip cushions to be just a little bit more effortless, a little bit more flattering on the lips. But again, go for the Glossier if you have darker lips and you want something more pigmented with a wider variety of shades. The M Cosmetics shades tend to be on the brighter side, whereas the Glossier shades were definitely a little bit more muted, more neutrals. If you have thinner lips like me, I would say go for the M Cosmetics lip cushions. So I think it really just depends on your lip size and shape your color preferences, ultimately your price point too. I think the Glossier R18 and the M Cosmetics, I don't remember, but they're probably in like the high 20s. So you're definitely paying a lot more. Both products are unscented and they feel really similar on the lips. I just, again, find M Cosmetics to be a little bit easier to apply because of the shape and size of the bullet and the fact that the pigment seems to work really well with the formula itself. Whereas with the Glossier, gets outside my lip lines a little bit um, and looks a little bit more makeup-y in my opinion, except for the shade Lucite, which actually reminds me more of the M Cosmetics lip cushions. Just to compare the two formulas, this is the Glossier Ultra Lip in Villa. This is the Glossier Ultra Lip in Angel. Again, all the M Cosmetics shades are definitely a lot brighter than Glossier's, um, but you can see the M Cosmetics just have a lot more shine. Um, whereas the Glossier, you have that nourishing feel, but if you really want it to be shiny, you have to build it up a lot. And I hope you can see this, but as I look at my hand, I can really see the texture of my skin underneath the Glossier. Whereas with the M Cosmetics Angel lip cushion, it smooths out my skin and you can't see the skin texture. So that's exactly what I was trying to say. The M Cosmetics kind of smooths texture. The Glossier doesn't, but they both feel very similar. That's it. That's it in a nutshell. There you go. That's the comparison. I hope that was helpful. That's it for today's video. I hope you found it helpful. And if you have any other video suggestions, let me know in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.